Okay, Brad, I got to hit pause really quick because we have another special guest joining us who is just on the field for the CONCACAF Champions League final, representing the Seattle Sounders, also represents the U.S. men's national team. His name is Jordan Morris. What's up, J-Mo? I just blew out your eardrums, but it's worth it. Congratulations <laughs> for winning the CONCACAF Champions League. We have been pining for that for I don't know how long. And you're representing not only the Sounders, but all of us in MLS that are super excited. Thank you for joining us today. How are you doing, my man? Yeah, thanks, man. I'm doing great. Yeah, you, you live great. in the dream. Everything's good. Actually, I'm going to pass the mic over to Brad Evans. Brad, do you have any special questions? Yeah, Jordan so Lawrence, before um, we let you go. Like in true, <laughs> in true Jordan fashion, like everyone was yeah celebrating. And then he just like kind of walks around and just, all right, where's my family? Um, I'm ready to go home. I'm ready to go uh, eat food and sleep and just hang out with my dog. Um, we didn't see you in the locker room though. And there were a couple, couple photos and some snippets, but walk us through the locker room after that game. Yeah, it was great, man. It was a, a classic celebration and everyone was happy having a great time. And, um, it's just such a good group of, of, of guys. I think that's what makes us successful. Honestly, is we have a, um, a, a great locker room and, um, guys that are just going to work and fight for each other. And you see that come out on the field. So whenever you get to celebrate with a group of guys like that, it's super special. All uh, right. Go ahead. Go ahead I, I just, Go ahead. I just need him to walk through this goal. Do it. Yeah. The, the, the second goal, the buildup and, yeah. and what you guys were feeling pressure, pressure from Pumas. Cause in the stands, I mean, we were sweating, but that goal yeah. just un un unlocked everything. For sure. I mean, I think we knew that, uh, when we scored in the first half, it was big, but we knew that they were going to come at us in the second half and we'd have to withstand some pressure, but we also knew that there would be space uh, on the counter to exploit, you know, and I think you saw that on the second goal. We, I think before that, you were right. We were um, under a lot of pressure. Um, they had the ball in our half lot. We were defending and, and we defended well as a team. And then, um, you know, they, they left a little bit of space in behind, which we were able to, to exploit and then you give Raul a chance from there and he's gonna he's gonna bury it so uh he's so clinical so I think we knew that those chances were gonna come we just had to be you know defend well and then uh exploit them at the right time I love that little pass by Nico Ladero too to set up yeah. a first time hit by Raul Rui Diaz I mean he is a yeah. special special player now before Brad Evans completely takes over our podcast and makes it his own we want to give a shout out to Brad Evans thank you for coming on the show B-Rad we appreciate you keep being the awesome human being that you are. We look forward to having you on again very, very soon, Brad. See you, boys. All right. Take it See easy, you, Brad, Brad, Brad Evans. So, J-Mo, uh, question from me then. Are you, I, I just assume there's going to be an emotional drop-off. Like, how do you that, – that is like you hit the peak of your season super early into your MLS <laughs> season. But I saw that Brian Schmetzer said afterwards, well, we have to focus on Dallas on the weekend. And, and he will never celebrate. <laughs> Schmetzer, Schmetzer never celebrates. But, but yeah. how, are the, how are the players going to kind of refocus? Because obviously you want to get going in MLS as well. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think we're enjoying it. We enjoyed it last night and today. And, you know, we, we take that time and, and, and look back on, on what we accomplished because it's a, a huge accomplishment and we're all incredibly proud um, of, of what we did as a team. But, yeah, we, you know, we know we haven't started out quite as well in, in MLS play because a lot of the focus was on, winning this tournament. And so um, we know that's really important to us as well. And, and, and we need to kind of get, get back on track and hopefully we can, we can start that this weekend. For uh, JMO, for you personally, has this been a goal that, that, that you wanted to accomplish in your career? Was it something that you saw as an achievement, obviously for the club you're building what, I mean, I, I, I can say it fundamentally, a, a, a dynasty has been built out, out of the club and it's a, it's a very young club. Was this something on that radar as well of, of, of needing to prove yourself against CONCACAF or, or, or was it just another thing to compete for? No, definitely. I think it, it was. And, and I, for, you know, this year felt different. We just going into this year, we, we, you know, with, if you look at the, the quality we have on the team, adding a guy like Albert to, to an already um, to a, to a roster with, with a bunch of quality already. We, I think we have the, you know, it's the deepest team I've ever played for. Um, you see guys that, that come in and fill in in positions, you know, when JP goes down and new goes down, you have guys, Obed and Kellen come in and, and do an amazing job. So it speaks to the, to the depth that we have as a team, but we just ha have a really talented roster. And I think there was just a different feeling around it this year that we, we were really confident that, that we could get the, get the job done. And it's definitely something for the club. We wanted to be that first MLS team to, to win this tournament. And, and uh, we're just excited that we did that. I've always been 
a fan of your game. I call you Jordan Zion Morris. Um, <laughs> and, and I think we can relate to each other in a, in a lot of ways with, with injuries and, and coming back. Um, can we talk about just your resilience coming into the league as that, you know, that young up and coming rising star college right to national team doesn't really happen. This build up, you get your move to Swansea and you have this injury. Now this build up going to the world cup is, is right there. I know that's got to be pushing you and you're still not quite yet back to that, that form that you were in prior to that, to the injury. How, how, how do you go about every day and what's that preparation like mentally and physically? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think going through last, last year, going through the rehab process, playing in, in games like this is kind of what motivated me to, to get back. So I, I think, um, knowing that these moments were ahead, getting to, getting to play for, for trophies, having the World Cup at the end of this year, trying to, to be a part of that group, get back in with the national team. That's what motivated me last year to, to get back on the field and, and have, uh, have moments like this. And, and I think, yeah, it takes, you know, it, it takes a little time to, to, to come back. And I remember I was thinking about it a bit. I feel like coming back from the last one, I really, really started to hit my stride kind of um, – late summer maybe, or, you know, summer after, after gold cup, I, I kind of started feeling like that's when I really started feeling back to myself. And, and, you know, I feel like I'm farther along this time ahead, but, but not quite back to where I was before the injury. So there's little things that I know I need to keep working on every day to, to, uh, to keep getting better and keep getting back to that, to that old form. But um, yeah, I mean, like I said, playing in games like that, winning trophies, it's what, what motivated me last year when I was going through that process. So it just feels great to be back. Now, Jordan, I know that you like to play golf, and I'm sure that's a good way to balance uh, all the pressure that you have to deal with on the field and as you prepare to be on the field and everything that you'd went through. How much golf are you going to be playing now? Is, is Schmetzer giving you guys a little bit of a break here uh, to, to kind of relax because of all the energy you put into making this special run? I hope so, man. I hope so. Trying to get out on the, trying to get out on the course. I don't know. For me, golf. It's definitely relaxing, but I'm not good enough yet. To, so it's still pretty uh, pretty stressful. What do you and shoot? Times are frustrating. Man, if I'm uh if I'm around a hundred, I'm happy. I'm I'm like one one oh five around there. So I'm, okay, I'm not, are I'm, you and me on the same? Okay, I'm not okay, great, like bro. I'm not great. <laughs> you know, I can hit a couple good shots, and it and it brings me back for the for the next. I'm like, oh, okay, I'll just do that next round, and it just never happens, obviously. But it's a it's a it's a great game, and it's a it's a, a fun way to kind of you know be be stressed outside of the outside of soccer. Uh, Jordan, now you know. Talk to us a little bit about your your charity, and for those that don't know, or maybe you're just tuning in, or sort of on the adjacent side of, of of soccer fandom, sort of why you you have this charity that you have, and 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 what it means to you. Yeah, so I'm a, a type one diabetic, and, and when I was um, growing up as as a kid, I would always look uh, to other diabetics that were playing, um, not just soccer, but professional sports in general, and use them as inspirations kind of, you know, if they can, can do it, why, why can't I, but I was never able to speak to them or hear their story or anything like that. So when I turned pro, I made that uh, a big goal of mine to, to just have outreach to, to young kids living with, with T1D and, and be able to hopefully give them some inspiration and, and some, some hope and, you know, really preach the message that, that type one can't hold you back from, from getting to where you want to be. So it's been a, a amazing. My, my family and I have, been running this foundation now for for almost five years and it's really um it's inspiring to me as well to, to speak with with these kids well i can tell you one thing you are a, a huge inspiration uh, a lot of of kids all over the world look up to you uh, one thing that i've always wondered is you've been playing recently on the wing for for a number of years now but i know you're you're not blocking this out the national team is struggling up top in that nine position you've had success in the nine position Obviously, with Seattle, Rui Diaz has kind of claimed that spot, and that's fine. But you know you can play there. Has that been on your mind at all, saying, hey, Greg, let me get fit and, and get back to my best form, but give me a shot at that position? Yeah, to, to be honest, the, you know, the, the coaches have, have spoke to me a bit with the national team about, um, you know, going in, in the last camp potentially coming in into the game and, and going up front. And, and when I did something, I ended up playing out wide. But I, I think that potentially is – is, is in the cards and, and I feel like I, um, you know, can, can offer, um, a, a lot up front. That was my natural position. Um, obviously coming out of, out of college and, and with, when I started with, with the national team. So, 
again, whatever, whatever, let's uh, go. That's whatever that's I can like do to, here. Let's to help go. the team, man. And whatever I can do to help the team and, you know, I'll play, I'll play wherever, but I definitely feel comfortable playing as a nine. I think sometimes even with the Sounders in, in the game, I end up uh, up there and, and making runs and things like that because it is um, somewhere that, that I feel comfortable. So yeah, definitely um, think it, it's a, a position that, that I can play.